welcome back to another episode of Become Limitless. Today, I am excited because we're going to go off script. I'm going to be sharing some valuable personal stories and lessons for you to encourage you and inspire you in your own journey of finding inner peace and profound transformation in every area of your life. So join me on this episode as we dive deeper into the art of letting go. The art of letting go is something that took me a long time to understand. And to illustrate the before and after, let me share with you a personal story of how I used to be before I discovered the power and the art of letting go. A few years back, I was a very controlling person. I was very rigid, isolated, and I was pretty much focused on productivity an outcome and my entire self-worth was really derived from how much work I was able to do in a single day, how many habits or how early I woke up. And you can imagine a few years back, I was waking up between 4.30 to 5 every single day. I was doing like a two to three hour routine. I was going to the gym. Initially, I felt amazing and it was an incredible and empowering feeling. But then my ego, my mind, did the mistake of attaching itself, my self-worth, because I still had holes within myself. I completely identified with what I did and what I did not. And so the days were, quote unquote, I didn't do enough. That's why we say in our minds, right? If I felt that I didn't do enough, I would reject myself and I would go into this almost like this freeze state where it was almost like nobody could pull me out of working. And even if it was like 6, 7 p.m., I would still continue to work because I feel that I needed to do more, that I needed to achieve more, especially in that day, so that I could feel productive, so that I could feel that I was worthy, really. And so I wasn't letting go. I wasn't surrendering and allowing things to be. It created a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of negativity. And not only that, but also my physical body, my health and well-being, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, they all suffered. Because imagine when I was in these days that I got caught up in these stuckness, these patterns of feeling like I needed to do more and I couldn't stop working. My physical body got really tensioned and stressed and then I started to get headaches and eye strains. And it was really bad. It was really detrimental to my health. But my ego wanted to be so much in control that it almost wouldn't allow me to let go of that grip and to release the need to keep doing. And this is a powerful personal story because it illustrates exactly how the ego works and the belief that it has that it controls everything, right? Because what my ego believed back then was that if I was able to work more every single day, if I was able to be more productive, then I would get my desired result, right? And so this was all, mind you, based on lack, based on fear. I want you to stop for a moment right now and ask yourself, if the actions that you're taking on a daily basis in your personal and professional life are based on lack and fear or abundance and love. Because the ego is always operating under scarcity, fear and lack. I had this lack so much embedded within me that I was always in a rush, in a race with time, with life. And that's why I felt that I needed to do so much in a day because if not, I felt like I was going to lose the race, to run out of time, to, in a way, not be in control. And my ego feared that so much of not being, quote unquote, in control, because then I couldn't control my outcome. What a silly mistake and belief, right? And if you have this belief right now, this next part of the story and the episode is going to be very enlightening for you because that is not the answer to force things, to 
overachieve or overdo or overwork ourselves to the point where we are not even looking after ourselves. And so I realized that I had created so much resistance in my own life that it got to the point where I was forced to awaken and start to let go. Start to let go of the need to control things because I realized that the real reason why I was being so productive and working so much is because on a deep level, I didn't trust myself and I didn't trust the universe or God or whatever higher power I believed that things would eventually work out in my favor. It was almost like I thought of myself as a drop in the ocean. I saw myself as separate from everything else and I felt very disconnected and worried about what might happen to me, the little me, the ego that believed that it was separate from everything else. And this is a very deep and powerful understanding because last week I gave you the analogy of the spider web, of how you can imagine a vast spider web in a forest. And if you zoom in, you can see those individual strands of that spider web. And that is what we believe we are, that we're just strands. But then if you zoom out, see that all of those strands are actually interconnected with each other in this complex network of the spider web in the forest. And this whole spider web represents the universe, just as each strand represents us, each individual human being. And even though we are a strand, we're also part of the bigger whole. We're part of the universe. And every little strand creates a ripple effect in the entire network of reality of the universe. So if we have this understanding that we're actually part of the whole, and this is the same way that quantum physicists explain this principle of how also each strand is an individual unit of energy and how the entire web of the spider is the interconnectedness and interdependence of all of the energies and particles that are connected with each other. If we know this, would it truly make sense that we are in control fully of our reality, of our destiny? Have you ever stopped and wondered and discovered that literally the best things in life that you've ever gotten have been without planning? Can you remember those blessings or those gifts that you received from life when you didn't expect it, when it wasn't planned or predicted by your mind? Those are the best moments because that's when we allow ourselves to let go and to receive. Because this is the most important realization that you need to make. And that is, you couldn't possibly know what is best for you at any given time. You couldn't possibly know the higher purpose, the higher plan that you have. There's so many invisible forces that are always working for you for your highest good, for your highest growth, for your highest evolution. But if you don't get out of your own way, you're going to keep creating suffering and pain and resistance until life forces you to take a step back, to be humble and realize that your mind, the ego, couldn't possibly know more than the intelligence, the architect of the universe itself. It's so intelligent outside of us and inside of us. There's so many billions of cells and thousands of processes that are happening right now inside your body that you couldn't possibly be aware of. That is the same intelligence that is all connected in that spider web. That communication, that network of energy is within you and outside of you. So how can we possibly know what is best for us when there is an infinite intelligence around us that is always present, that is always loving us and is always telling us that we need to let go, that we need to surrender sometimes to this higher intelligence, to life itself. Because if we keep forcing our way through, we're just operating on lack and scarcity and you're going to feel that stress for the rest of your life. But if you're humble enough to realize that you couldn't possibly know it all, predict all of the outcomes, then you can find inner peace. You can experience a profound transformation, but only when you truly 
let go of that grip, of that chain that you've been holding for so long, that you've been pulling against life. It's almost like you're in a battle against life. The strength of life is way more powerful than you because you are a part of life, but you believe yourself to be separate. And so this little tiny separate self, which is your ego, is trying to pull against life. And so you try to pull so much that your hands start to bleed. Where are you going to make that conscious decision that you need to let go of that grip so that you can experience the freedom? Wow. Everything becomes so much more effortless and easy. And have you noticed that when you actually truly let go of something and you surrender it, for example, let's say that you've been seeking your soulmate for years and you're so determined to get that that you're almost addicted and you do everything you can you go on social media you dm girls or guys you go on dating applications you go out to bars or to places to meet people but because you're forcing it so much it's not really working right even if you're getting dates something's not clicking right it's because you're forcing your way through and life is sending you a signal and telling you it's either not the right time for you or you're not in the right place to look for that. Maybe there's a lesson you still need to learn. Maybe there's still some integration or healing that you need to do within. But just with the analogy of the chain or that rope that you're holding against life, what happens when you truly let go of that desire, that expectation, when you surrender to that desire of having an intimate relationship and you say, you know what, I trust life, I trust the universe, I know everything is working for me and everything happens at the right time, at the right place, I know that everything is perfect. What happens the next day? Something happens magically, either on the way to your usual destinations or a restaurant or a park, or a library, or whatever it might be. And without you even knowing, you meet your soulmate. And that is how life works. If you allow yourself to take a step back and trust yourself deeply, trust life and the universe deeply, you're going to experience more magic and miracles that you could ever imagine. And so to conclude the entire episode, by experientially knowing this, because I knew this in my mind for a long time. I was like, yeah, I know I need to surrender. I need to let go of control. You really need to integrate it. You really need to experience it. So practice with the small things. Try to let go of control of little things and then work your way up. But the final piece of the puzzle that I'll share with you is your ego is the only one who wants to be in control. Your true self knows that everything in life is perfect that everything is happening perfectly for you. Even if you're going through a hard time, there is something good, there is something powerful behind that. And so if you realize that it was never you all along that wanted to be in control, that had this fear, that had this scarcity, this lack, that's gonna give you a lot of freedom and inner peace and transformation because you'll say, aha, I can see how my ego was creating these patterns and emotions of lack and scarcity. And so you can take a step back and hold that knowing, as I like to say, that you as your true self are connected to everything. You're part of the bigger whole. You're part of the big spider web and that forest. You're not only a strand. And so the more that you can contemplate on this, the more safe, secure, the more supported you feel. And it just keeps getting better and better. And so through this realization was the only way that I could ever go from who I am today, from that old version of myself who was literally the most negative, angry, resented, judgmental person that I ever knew. And that is the power, that is the miracle of surrendering, of letting go of that grip, of that rope that is currently making your hands bleed. That is the message for today. Thank you for joining me on this powerful episode. I'm JP. Thank you for your presence and your time. I will see you on the next one. Today's episode is brought to you by Transcendence Healing, aka me. I have one overarching goal 
and that is to help you remove the blocks that are preventing you from reaching your full potential and making a bigger impact in the world. This is the journey that I've been obsessed over the last five years. And this is how Transcendence Healing was born. Transcendence Healing is a holistic blend of brainwave state change, of energy healing and subconscious reprogramming that allows you to instantly experience permanent and profound transformations in all areas of your life. I feel that it is now time to bring this to a community, to scale this goodness and to give these tools to people who want to learn them for themselves, for their loved ones, and perhaps even for their clients. This is Transcendence University, the all-inclusive online community where you get access to weekly calls with me, where you get access to the entire framework, the 12 steps of Transcendence Healing, where you go on a journey and you clear on all 12 dimensions of your life, all of those invisible blocks that are preventing you from reaching your full potential. You're going to get access to so many resources, connections, experiences. I invite you to join Transcendence University. That's gonna be the journey of a lifetime. Very excited to see you on the other side and connect with you.